The dynastic Egyptians were a civilization known for their tremendous achievements throughout their long history. They had a profound spiritual belief system rooted in mythology, built impressive megalithic monuments, and made significant advancements in writing witnessed by their unique hieroglyphic system. But there are also some things about Egyptian culture that we may find disturbing and downright creepy. From mummification to rumors of cannibalism, here are eight of the creepiest and most mysterious parts of Egyptian culture that were considered normal. Number one, the use of human body parts in medical practices. The dynastic Egyptians had a unique and specialized form of medicine that encompassed not only a vast understanding of human anatomy and science, but within it, ideas based on mysticism. The physicians and healers of this era were well revered by their communities and understood to possess vast amounts of knowledge and wisdom. Many of the treatments performed by ancient Egyptian physicians were accomplished through complex rituals accompanied by the use of various medical ingredients. However, one part of ancient Egyptian medicinal practices, which you may find downright disturbing and gruesome, was the use of human body parts as ingredients. But to better understand this complex system of medicine, it's best to first explore the reasoning behind using human body parts in a wide array of medical treatments. The belief in the mystical and supernatural was prevalent throughout many ancient cultures, including the dynastic Egyptians, and this heavily influenced their everyday lives. The physicians of ancient Egypt were taught that the human body held powerful healing properties, and this idea had its roots in magic. They believed that the body parts of recently deceased individuals could be used to heal others. On top of this, it was assumed that the special attributes once possessed by the dead would be carried forth in this medicine. Thus, these body parts were highly sought after by physicians and healers, with the most important being human tissue, fluids, and even bones. For example, bone powder was explicitly used to treat medical problems with the head, whereas human fat was used in the preparation of ointments to treat cuts and burns. One reasonably unusual aspect of ancient Egyptian medicine was the use of ancient mummies in many remedies. The deceased mummies were thought to have a special kind of healing energy, so they would be ground up into an extremely fine powder and used in a wide array of medicines. While this may seem ludicrous by today's standards, the Egyptians built up a renowned form of medicine using these particular practices. Modern healthcare professionals have even referred to the high level of medical expertise that existed during the reign of the dynastic Egyptians. Number 2. Sacred Animal Cults and Ritual Sacrifices The dynastic Egyptians had a soft spot for their animals, and they domesticated just about everything from cattle to monkeys falcons, dogs, and even lions. Rumors even suggest that ancient Egypt was the first to truly domesticate cats on a wide scale. Many of these animals also played a significant role in the cultural and religious beliefs of the dynastic Egyptians, and various strange animal cults existed throughout the land. Many of these secretive animal cults were considered sacred by their members, and the specific animals they worshipped were believed to embody particular attributes of various Egyptian deities. These cults engaged in the veneration of multiple animals, ranging from dangerous and fierce beasts such as lions and crocodiles to much smaller and passive ones like birds and fish. If someone asked you to join an animal-based cult in our modern era, you would most likely avoid this person for the remainder of your life. However, understanding the significance of these practices offers insight into the dynastic Egyptians' way of life. The animal cults were generally centered around their own specific temples, which were dedicated to particular deities. The worshippers would bring various offerings, such as mummified animals, and perform rituals to honor their chosen animals, who themselves were seen as manifestations of their gods. For instance, the jackal represented the well-known Egyptian deity of the afterlife, Anubis. In most cases, ritualistic sacrifice was also performed within many of these animal cults. The animals were carefully selected and raised with the specific purpose of later being sacrificed to various Egyptian deities. This was aimed at pleasing the gods, who in return would bestow some level of protection over the followers and their families, and bring the cult prosperity. The animals were treated with the utmost respect and given a comfortable life in the lead-up to their sacrifice. Many of them were even adorned with expensive jewelry and other embellishments. The animals were ritually purified before being 
sacrificed, and once this was complete, the body was generally mummified in the same way as humans and buried within a sacred necropolis. If you're equally as creeped out as you are intrigued about these unusual practices from ancient Egypt, subscribe to Magma Storm for more videos just like this one. Number 3. Servants were buried alive with their masters. One of the dynastic Egyptians' most unusual and chilling practices was the custom of burying servants alongside their recently deceased masters. This deranged practice is often referred to as retainer sacrifice and aimed to ensure that masters entering the afterlife had servants to accompany them wherever they went next. While the idea of sacrificing a servant to accompany a master into the afterlife may seem a deluded and downright crazy idea by modern standards, we must remember that beliefs and everyday life in ancient Egypt were extremely different from our modern times. The practice of retainer sacrifice was most popular during the early dynastic period, around 3100 BCE. This practice began to slowly lose favor as the dynastic Egyptians evolved both physically and spiritually. This custom is frequently observed in the burials of Egypt's elite, such as pharaohs, members of the royal family, officials, governors, and other high-ranking members of society. The practice was deeply rooted in ancient Egypt's unique religious belief system. It was believed by all dynastic Egyptians that the afterlife of the departed greatly mirrored their existence here on Earth. Thus, if one wanted to ensure that they thrived in the afterlife, just like on Earth, they would need all of their earthly possessions, including their servants. Generally, the servants accompanying the departed to the afterlife were killed by poison. This was to ensure no visible injury to their bodies, as preserving one's physical form was greatly sought after for the afterlife. However, as the dynastic Egyptians continued to evolve, the practice of retainer sacrifice was replaced by including small statues as grave goods. These small statues were known as shabti and were said to act as enchanted substitutes instead of sacrificing loyal servants. They would typically be inscribed with spells that would ensure they came alive in the afterlife and could perform the tasks which the servants once performed on Earth. Number 4. The Belief in Curses and Execration Rituals The dynastic Egyptians believed heavily in the existence of supernatural forces, and this played a huge role in their everyday lives. They believed in both a positive and negative form of magic, and the power of curses was a genuine threat to their everyday lives. Execration rituals, which in involved cursing and attacking one's enemies was a common practice widely used throughout ancient Egypt. While the idea of using curses or even magic may seem dark and unbelievable to some, this was held in high regard throughout ancient Egypt. The use of magic was generally aimed at protecting individuals or even large communities from the malevolent forces that existed beyond the physical realm. Alternatively, curses were also employed in times of war to help weaken and or even defeat an invading army. The rituals were performed by experienced priests and magicians, and sometimes even everyday citizens, which demonstrates the level of credibility placed upon cursing by the ancient Egyptians. In order to perform an execration ritual, one would first need to create a representation of the intended target. This would usually take the form of a wax or clay sculpture. Less common was the use of papyrus scrolls, which contained the names of and possibly even a description of the intended target target, often combined with magical incantations. Following this, the objects would be burned, smashed, stabbed, or buried. This was to symbolically bring about the destruction of their adversaries and to nullify their harmful intent. Many of these artifacts have been recovered from various archaeological sites across Egypt. This has given researchers valuable insight into the beliefs of malevolent forces and magic to the dynastic Egyptians. Number 5. The Role of Ancestral Relationships in Ancient Egypt in in ancient Egypt, it was considered a common practice for many of the pharaohs and members of the royal family to intermarry with their siblings. The idea of marrying within the family seems rather unsettling and extremely wrong to us, looking at the idea through a modern lens, for we know the physical implications of having offspring in this manner. However, these incestual marriages ensured that the bloodline of the dynasty stayed pure to one individual family. Incestual marriage was an integral part of the social and political structure of many dynastic
dynastical lineages to better understand why such marriages were allowed and almost forced upon many of the Egyptian dynasties, we must first look into the cultural reasons behind this practice. Anyone who was crowned as pharaoh of ancient Egypt was looked upon as a manifestation of divinity and was considered to be descended from the gods themselves. They were considered an earthly embodiment of the divine power held by the various deities of the Egyptian pantheon, so their role was to ensure that the Egyptian kingdom remained in a state of harmonious balance with the universe and in line with what they called Ma'at. Thus, the intermarriage between the pharaoh and one of their siblings, who were also seen as an embodiment of divine power, was seen as a way in which the dynasty could maintain the cosmic order of the earth and wider universe. On top of this, it would ensure that their offspring would inherit the same divine power and thus be able to carry on their royal bloodline. Sibling marriages among the pharaohs of dynastical Egypt also served many purposes in the political world. For one, it helped to solidify alliances with other noble families and prevent power struggles that otherwise would bring about the downfall of the royal lineage. Marriages within the same family ensured a certain level of loyalty between the spouse and pharaoh and minimized the risk of treason or rebellion from within the family. Thus, the practice of incestual marriages in the eyes of the dynastic Egyptians helped to promote a stabilized dynasty and centralized power structure, which ensured longevity for the royal line. Many of the cultural beliefs and mythological legends played a considerable role in normalizing the practice of incestual marriages. Numerous couples throughout Egyptian mythology featured sibling couples, such as the famous Isis and Osiris, who played a prominent role throughout many of the legends. By emulating the social practices of their divine gods, the pharaohs could enforce their godlike status on the people of their kingdom, ultimately validating their rule. Number 6. Dream Interpretation and Supernatural Omens The dynastic Egyptians were fiercely spiritual people who believed in various otherworldly ideas that went far beyond the physical realm. Dream interpretations and the belief in supernatural omens directly reflect the level of spirituality that existed throughout ancient Egypt. While modern skeptics would certainly disagree with the idea that any insight could be drawn from interpreting dreams, to understand why the Egyptians held this practice in such high regard, we must first understand why and how the Egyptians interpreted their dreams. Dreams of the ancient Egyptians were seen as a way in which the everyday individual could communicate with their gods and even ancestors in the spiritual realm. They heavily believed that messages and signs could be sent to them during their dream state, and these could be interpreted to gain insight into what lay in store for them in the future. The practice of dream interpretation played a huge role in the everyday life of ancient Egyptians, as it ultimately influenced their daily actions and decisions. The dynastic Egyptians believed that dreams could provide information on future events, prophecies, or even warnings about dangerous events that may take place in the future. Because of this belief, dream interpretation became a renowned skill throughout Egyptian civilization and was sought after by individuals from commoners to farmers and priests and pharaohs. Everyone strongly believed in this practice. The interpretation of dreams began with a skilled practitioner analyzing the symbols and imagery of the dreams and providing guidance based on this information. Numerous ancient Egyptian texts provide more insight into how widespread this belief was, such as the Chester Beatty Papyrus, which contains a list of dreams and how they should be interpreted. These texts shed light on the various readings that could be obtained from dreams, including impending health issues, political affairs, relationship advice, and religious guidance. As well as a strong belief in the interpretation of dreams, the dynastic Egyptians held special reverence towards supernatural omens, which were read from things such as the movement of the celestial bodies, unusual behavior of animals, and even weather patterns. These omens were seen as indicators of divine will, and if interpreted correctly, they could could foretell impending events. Many of these omens were carefully examined and investigated by priests and wise individuals and were used to influence decisions on everything from warfare to agriculture. Number 7. Mummification – The Art of Preserving the Dead Mummification and the art of preserving one's body following their death was a significant part of Egyptian culture. Mummification was a highly religious practice and process that prepared the deceased for the afterlife. The process would undoubtedly be seen as grotesque by today's standards due to the various steps involved in the process. The mummification process had various intricate steps that could often take up to 70 days to complete. Following the death of an individual, their body would be taken to a skilled embalmer, who was generally a priest or member of the elite class. 
as this was a profoundly religious process, first, the body would be washed and purified. After this, the brain was removed through the nose using specialized hooks. Then the internal primary internal organs such as the liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines were removed and separately preserved in canopic jars. Next, the body would be dehydrated by covering its entirety in a naturally occurring mineral known as natron. The body would be covered with this salt for around 40 days, ultimately stopping the decomposition process. Following these steps, the body was again cleaned and then covered in oils to protect the skin. Finally, the body was wrapped in various layers of linen bandages, with different protective amulets placed between many of the layers. The bandages were then sealed with a specific resin, ensuring the body remained intact as it traveled to the afterlife. Number 8. The Practice of Cannibalism in Ancient Egypt We've left the most absurd and horrific part of ancient Egyptian culture to the last, the idea of cannibalistic rituals. The topic of cannibalism being practiced during the dynastic Egyptian era has been greatly debated by archaeologists and Egyptologists over the centuries, with some suggesting that there is clear evidence in hieroglyphic inscriptions. In comparison, others have made the case that this is nothing more than a symbolic reference. While this topic certainly borders on the line of myth or reality, there is enough evidence to at least entertain the idea that the dynastic Egyptians performed some kind of cannibalistic rituals. One of the most apparent justifications that insist the dynastic Egyptians practiced some form of cannibalism comes to us from the pyramid texts. One passage from this is known as the Cannibal Hymn, which can still be seen in the tomb of the pharaoh Unus. This describes the king consuming the body parts of deities to try and attain their divine powers. However, in this case, many scholars suggest that this is merely a symbolic reference and is only intended to represent the pharaoh's quest for divine power, as opposed to the actual act of consuming human flesh. This is not the only piece of evidence that points towards cannibalistic behavior in ancient Egypt. More evidence comes from archaeological digs, which may point toward the practice of cannibalism by certain sects in ancient Egypt. A few sites have revealed human remains that show strong signs of being defleshed and even butchered using large knives. This kind of find is generally ascribed to cannibalistic activities. So, while the evidence is inconclusive on whether or not the dynastic Egyptians practiced some form of cannibalism, there is enough information to insist that at least the idea of cannibalistic behavior did exist during the period. It seems more likely that various small sects existed who did in fact engage in cannibalistic rituals, as opposed to it being a widely accepted practice. And that is our eight most unusual usual and creepy parts of ancient Egyptian culture, subscribe to MagmaStorm if you'd like to see more videos like this on ancient history.